Welcome to part two of our conversation with Dan Rivera about a dark world. When you're on an investigation and it's it's a new one, you may not know a lot about it yet. You've asked your questions, but you, it's enough for you to be there, and you're you're in there, and and it seems to be that there's something negative going on, but you not you're not quite sure. It, it could possibly be something just as there's negative people in this world and and very evil you know seemingly people but very very dark intent that uh, if you'd met them as a ghost you would almost uh, automatically assume this is a demon but in life you would almost assume they were a demon too because of their deeds how is it that you're able to decipher between the two when you're dealing with someone that is a spirit that was earthbound but is very very dark in their intent uh, versus something that is, in fact, demonic. I, I know. I believe that um, uh, earthbound spirit or human spirit cannot possess possess a person. I don't believe that they could do physical harm to a person. Only a demonic spirit that has that much strength that could throw something across the room, scratch somebody, infest their soul, their you know they're evil into some a living person mm-hmm. you know a human spirit i don't believe could do that you know but something evil that's you know older than time itself could do that so and that, that's interesting to hear uh because i I've, I've talked to people who do believe that a a earthbound spirit can cause physical harm to to the living um i i I would put it in a different category of the the depth as to which they can cause harm but when when you see yeah see see when when you you hear about cases like that Mm -hmm. they always say there's another entity okay there's something something else evil there well i believe that there is a demon it could be a demonic you know demon could Mm -hmm. be a demon there also earthbound spirit but that demon is controlling that earthbound spirit. Okay. And that, that's All that's right. actually where I was about to go, because that was another concept that I, I find very interesting, where almost a, a, I don't know if you want to call it a reverse possession or what it would be, where someone is on the other side as an earthbound spirit, but they're being controlled by something dark, by something demonic. Does that right. happen? Where it, it could be... Uncle Larry was a predator or something and just a horrible human being, but he's dead and we believe he's haunting our house because sometimes you smell his tobacco or something. And and it's fairly just not threatening. Cabinet doors open, but there's not a whole lot else going on. But then all of a sudden it ramps up and it still seems like Uncle Larry, but now shit got really real. Uh, you know, and, and the concept of a, a demon possessing the already dead. Let's talk about right. that for a little bit. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, say, for instance, a serial killer. Yeah. Right? Something was driving that person to commit these murders, putting these thoughts in their head. It's like a, like an addict, all right, to get a high off of it, all right? Yeah. So that's a demonic presence driving them to do that, to commit these acts of evil, okay? Mm-hmm. They could pass away, all right? Their spirit could be still lingering around, but they still have that de- attachment from that demonic spirit that drove them to do all those things. Mm-hmm. So if you think about that, like, you know, things like that, you know, you can think about those actions, the demonics are going to, it's going to want to keep destroying people. Okay. So when somebody is being physically harmed in the location that they went to this, you know, serial killer's house, that's a demonic. It's a negative impression. It's going to affect you. It's going to try to harm you. It's trying to try to destroy you. All right. But you're going to think is uh, John Wayne Casey. It's John Wayne Casey's, devil that's actually harming you yeah so when that connection is made does that and this is just opinion based obviously but does that connection need to be made in life when someone is a horrible person and they're doing those things and the source that's driving those evil thoughts and those evil deeds does the connection between the the demonic and the living need to happen on this plane on the living side for the possession on the other side to take place or is it possible for 
you know, Aunt Susie, who was a great lady who baked a lot of brownies and attended everybody's softball games and had nothing but good. Everyone has good things to say about her and she didn't dabble in anything. Is it possible for her on the other side to end up being the victim of something very dark, of something taking over her body or her or her soul, her being, her energy uh, and then using it for ill? It's very possible. I mean, like I said, I mean, there's a lot about the paranormal that we don't know. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we won't have those answers until we go to heaven. Sure. Um, all we could do is, you know, we could go and help people. We could try to take somebody that's performed some of these evil acts, and hopefully we get them to see the light, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would love to, you know, interview a serial killer and get into his mind and try to find out where it all started. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe try to give him closure, you know, and try to get him released from these demons. Um, You know, every day in life, when you see somebody that's being affected by something, you will want to help them. You know, sometimes we can't help all these people. Yeah. But if you help one person, that's all that matters. You know, sure. And 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 that's what we that's what we do this for. And the goal is obviously, you know, to help the living, to help them move on is when we're talking about, you know, casting something demonic away from a, a person, uh, it, quite often, you know, it, it's it's thought, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're, you're casting it away, it's being cast out, but it's not being destroyed. It, it's it's going somewhere else after it's, it's but moved it's away. It's going to find another target. Yeah. Is there ever a way... If if someone's spirit on the other side is possessed and then, in fact, doing the deeds of something else to exercise the demon out of the spirit. We all all we could do is pray for souls. Okay, pray for souls for they could see the light and they could pass on. Um, That's all we could do. Um, You know, it's a battle that we fight every day. I mean, there's more demons around us than we think of, you know, and they're just waiting for an opportunity to come and try to harm us. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why we always need to be on our guard. You know, we got to be, you know, good people. And, um, and we cheat, we try to teach that to others. Um, And I think when people are are interested in this field, um, they need to learn that Um, they need to be good people. If you want to help somebody, you got to help yourself first. Um, And that's the model. Um, and I don't think you can help somebody if you have your own demons. Sure. It's like that That part needs to be cleansed yourself before you can be good. I mean, and that's a principle of just, you know, just general, you know, health and mental well-being. You can only be a, a good father, a good husband, a good parent, a good whatever, uh, you know, a good friend if if you are in good mental health uh, in states. Right. And it would be the same spiritually as well. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, um, and I think that goes in today's world. I mean, what we're we're seeing, what's going on right now. Um, you know, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, it's politics and everything," but you gotta look a little bit deeper into it um, and see the signs. You know, what's going on, and uh, I, you know, I can't force my opinion on people or anything like that. Sure, but we're we're here to observe and to see what's actually happening. Um, it, it's it's sad, but I mean. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're here to, to, you know, show these, try to show these people that, you know, not everything you see on TV is real, you know? Yeah. When it comes to, you know, the, the demon word, and we've been talking a lot about that today, it's obviously it's intriguing and it it gets people's interest, but I've always, I I tend to gravitate that direction naturally out of interest as well. But is that a word in your opinion? Is that something that is used too frequently or, or, or are we not using it frequently enough? Cause quite often you'll hear investigators say, Oh, everything you hear the word demon thrown out there. And it's very few times is, is it actually a demon in your opinion though? Are there more things out there that are being influenced by something very dark than, than we realize? No, oh, all the time, all the time. I mean, I mean, go back in history. I mean, you see it. I mean, there's, there's always, it's, it's always an influence, you know? Um, you know, for instance, Hitler, you know, sure. how he brainwashed his people, you know, he was giving them everything that they wanted. You know, send your family on a cruise. We'll give you this, give you that. But once he had them under his control, 
all of a sudden the tables changed. You know, look what happened over there. Um, it's, you know, possibly could happen over here. You know, I mean, it's the influence. It's how people get influenced so easily and then they become blind. But then they're going to be calling for help when shit turns around. Yeah. How often do you see, is it fairly frequent when you investigate something where it seems initially the family suspects it's an earthbound spirit? They think they have an identification of what it is. And the the further you dig and the deeper you get, it turns out to be that, that it is not, in fact, an earthbound spirit, but it is something in disguise trying to appear to be something else. Very much. I mean, like I said, this case that we did in PA, um, they thought it was uh, a young girl um, that had passed away, mm-hmm. and um, she was attached to this uh, one of the family members. And um, at you know, the further I went digging into his past and everything, it was actually a demon um, trying to trick him to believe in that it is a girl. And once we revealed that, the demon didn't like that, and it started swearing at us. It started, you know, things started happening in the house and everything got a little crazy there for a while but then his eyes opened up and he realized it wasn't this girl that was you know haunting him his life it was a demon and um once he realized that and he opened up his eyes i think that's when um he started healing um and his family started getting better um he started going back you know going on to the right path and uh he had the right intentions. He wanted to help his family. He wanted to help himself. And um, it's a matter of uh, revealing the demon and recognizing it. And then you don't give it any more power. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about uh, oppression and possession. Uh, two things and two words that I, I think sometimes get used incorrectly uh, or, or interchanged where, where they shouldn't be. Give our audience some insight as to the differences between the two and, and why they are starkly different when, when you fully understand what they mean. Okay, I mean, oppression is something that's like being depressed. Um, you know, you're down on yourself. Um, you're still able to um, perform your daily routines and whatnot, but, you know, you're always drained, um, you know, being negative all the time. Um and if that, if that continues, then you start isolating yourself. Um, you lock yourself in a room. You don't want to deal with society anymore. And that's the breakdown. Um, that is breaking your will down. And once the will's broken down, then you're open up for possession. And once the demon gets inside of you, that's when it tries to destroy you. How would, I mean, and, and it's a scary thing, and, and as is obviously depression. Um, how does someone identify if if they are suffering from some sort of oppressive force and oppression that's being caused by in fact a demonic force and not something of a a more medical chemical type imbalance well here that's what we do we use holy relics Mm -hmm. um and uh we could go behind somebody and we could have the rosaries in our hand and we could go behind them and we could put the rosaries on their back without them knowing and if they react to it all right not knowing that i just put the rosaries on your back possibly that's where that you believe that they could be possessed because the demonic does not like any holy relics mm-hmm. so for instance um i had a production team out of ireland that wanted to do a show with us um it was about this girl in germany she was uh possessed uh so we, they wanted to do a documentary on her well, one of the producers went down there to, to interview um, the girl, and um, he's been on some of these cases before that involved uh, possession. So he was told to always carry, you know, holy relics with him. So he has some rosaries, crosses in his bag, and he's there interviewing the girl, and he reaches for his bag to take his camera out. The girl knew that there was something else in that bag because her face changed, her eyes turned black. And as he was pulling the camera out, the rosaries fell out and she freaked out. She knew that when he was reaching into his bag, there was something in there and she didn't like it. Mm -hmm. The demonic didn't like it. And then she started coming under possession. The demon started coming out. 
that's when you know somebody is possessed. It's when you have a holy relic, but the human soul doesn't see it, but the demon does see it and feels that. Let me ask you this uh, in closing, and we had talked about this briefly earlier. Uh, and we're not getting political or anything like that, but just, you know, we're in a very troubled time right now uh, throughout the entire world with everything that's going on here as we're recording this uh, in October of 2020. What, what sort of advice would you give to the listeners out there who, you know, we're you know, a lot of us are isolated. You know, many of us are, are dealing with, um, you know, depression, anxiety, things of that nature. Um, you know, not everyone is in the, they're not being their best selves right now, if you will. You know, everyone's light is not shining right. as bright as it, it, it no may normally be. Leaving the gateway open when you're in those sort of states for things to come in and attach and, and to, to feed on that anxiety and that depression and those, those, those emotions that are human. But what would you say to people out there to try and get through these difficult times, however long they may last, to, to try and keep things at bay and, and to try and, and, and find some sanity and, and keep their own protection up uh, as, as we all endure whatever the world's going to be throwing at us uh, every other week. And here's the thing. Um, I think uh, in our society today, we lost our faith in God. Um, and if you look at a lot of these uh, political parties, um, they want to take God out of everything. Um, you know, back in the day, we used to sit down with our families and eat dinner. We pray before we eat. You know, you pray before you go to bed. Um, our kids don't have any knowledge of that it was um lost you know during time and um you know like i said you have a lot of political parties that want to you know take god out you know out of the national anthem um take god out of our schools um we need to find god we need to have faith in god once you put your faith back in god things will get better um but if you keep continuing taking god out of the equation things are going to continue to get worse um, all you got to do is open your eyes, see what's going on. You know, don't get fixated on one news station. Look at multiple news stations. Make your judgment. Open your eyes. Um, if you are from a religious family or a religious, you know, your grandparents were religious, you know, go back and see how they learned. Um, you know, I think like I said, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what religion you are. God is the same God in every religion. Um, try to find some faith and, and some hope. And then once you put your hope and faith into God, things will get better. Um, just people need to open their eyes. That wraps up the second half of our conversation with Dan Rivera about a dark world. A big thank you to Dan for joining us on the program today from the New England Society for Paranormal Research. And thank you for being a supporter of our program and keeping us on the air. Until next time, for The Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.